Continuing with exercise one, where we left off, we had just opened up auto draw. And we were using our tablets, though of course you could use a trackpad, you can use a mouse. And I was just showing you the basic, basic functions of drawing within the program. And any raster program is going to allow you to control your the size of your stylus, you know, the thickness, and the color. So I'm just going to change the color to black, though we can do this later if we need to as well. And then instead of using the regular draw, I'm going to use the auto draw, which is what this program is all about, with the little stars by it. To clear and start over, I'm just going to click on these three bars. And now I've researched Cat's Cradle. I have a sense of why it's banned. And I got to think of what are some pertinent, relevant images, symbols that might work for it. And it has to do with the destruction of humankind, you know, through its technological hubris. And so I'm curious if like for the atomic bomb, if there's something like a mushroom cloud. So I'm just going to draw, it can be with my stylus, it can be with my mouse, I can add to it something that looks like a mushroom cloud. And there's not a mushroom cloud, which I'm not that surprised by, that I'm seeing, but I see trees and I see broccoli. <laughs> And I see this kind of puff, which could work. So these are clip art variations that resemble my drawing. And I can think which one kind of works, because I can modify these. I just can't create my own pixels. And I think I like... I think I like this one, which will be kind of my mushroom cloud. Now, if you use the move tool here, I can move it, make it pretty big, but make sure that white's all the way around it. And then I can maximize it on my screen. Because instead of sharing it, downloading it, though I can try that, I can try downloading, it's going to give me a PNG. And then if I want to see the size of that, it's probably going to be larger than a screen grab. It's going to be 18 by 13 inches by 72 pixels per inch. All of these are going to be screen resolution, 72 pixels per inch. So if we zoom in on them, you're going to see the pixels. But that's okay. The other option, so you can go ahead and download them. Once you've found a symbol, the other option, like it says in the directions, is you can always do a screen grab. And to do a screen grab for a Mac, you do Command Shift 4, and then you drag the box around what you want to copy, and then it will save it onto your desktop, just like we were, we were doing with our um, selfies last class. So to do that, I want to make sure it's nice and clean on the screen. It's taking up a lot of the screen. You guys have much bigger screens than I have. I'm just using my laptop. But then you do Command Shift 4 all together. You get this little targeted uh, crosshairs icon. Then you click and drag a box around what you want. And it will save it to your desktop as a screenshot which we can use later. So there you see it. And this, compared to the one I downloaded, is 11 by 9 inches by 72. So you'll get about twice the size of a laptop screen if you download it. <laughs> I think your, your computers, you have 21 inch 4K retina screens. So your image is going to be about the same as if you download it, if you screen grab it or download it. So I guess we might as well just download it. And you can always download it more than once. And then you'll see it in your downloads folder, which is the one closest to your trash can. So I'll keep that downloads folder open.
remove ones I don't need. So that's one symbol. Not exactly a mushroom cloud. Another is a cat. So I'm going to start over. Do a rough little drawing of the profile of a cat. Ooh, with my trackpad. Looks like a little pig right now or a dog. Need some ears on it. See what they give me. Give me a wiener dog, sure enough. Give me a chicken. Lots of dinosaurs. Man, they have a lot of dinosaur options. Llamas. Good to see llamas represented. So there might be a lot of reasons you don't see the exact clip art you have in mind. They might not have it, right? Like a profile of a cat. So I might have to approach it a different way. Do I start over? Let's try to draw just a cat's head. Ooh, really loose. Put some eyes in there. There we go. So these are the cats we have. And then if it gets the cat's head, it will likely give you some of those other versions. So this is not line art. This is what's called a full bleed illustration. It's like a stamp. And that's not gonna work really great for this project because we're layering line art on top of each other. So no matter how much I like that, I want something more like this. This is a line art clip art that's not very clean. You know, but still licensable and usable, and you're free to use it. This one is pretty clean. I think I like that one. Here's one sitting. Here's a tiger. Who doesn't like tigers? But I think that makes sense. That's just the most straightforward. So I'll go ahead and download that. And notice when we download them, I can just say save file. It's going to just give it the name that's generated by the program. But if I check on my downloads, I'll see that they're always there. Okay, I'm going to do one more this way, and then I'm going to show you another way you can find your source, your line art. That's a little bit more directed, because here you have to know what you're trying to do, and you're hoping the computer will catch up with you. So the other is a human hand because cat's cradle is this string game <laughs> of putting string between human hands and just a nice kind of clip art line art example of human hand with its fingers outstretched so i like this one and then i want it to be symmetrical because cat's cradle is about spreading it between two hands so what I can do once I have it is I can use this select tool. I can click on it and then I can hit a command C and then command V. So command C and command V, just like you're in any program like Microsoft Word, will give you a copy and a paste. But I want them to be flipped on each other. So I can right click and see inside, but doesn't give me the option like it will in Photo P or Photoshop to flip it horizontally. So instead I have to do it manually, but I'm just gonna flip it like that. And then try to line them up just visually. So there's space between them. And then I'm gonna download that. I can also select and select both of them and then make both of them now bigger so I get a little bit higher resolution because this clip art is actually a vector so however you enlarge it it will always be clean but because you're not able to download vector files from this website whatever size it appears on the screen is the resolution it's going to be so I'm trying to maximize that but we'll learn lots and lots about resolution okay so those are the three I'm getting from Pixabay For this exercise, we do not need to post our process, but it's good to know what that process is. And so now I'm going to try something else. I've downloaded all of them. I'm going to leave Pixabay. I'm just going to go to Google Images. 
It's likely we are already familiar with a Google image search, but it's different than a, an overall Google search. You'll see this little camera in the search window. And for Google images, I'm gonna type in, that seems like an obvious thing to try to get relevant images for the book. And what you'll see is just a random assortment of all the images used that are tagged with that name, like a hashtag on Instagram or on Twitter. And what I'm interested in is the, the lines, right? But the problem is a lot of these are photos. This one's line art. This might be usable. But if I want to limit it to just black line art, we're going to specialize in Google Image Search a little bit. I'm going to click on Tools. So I'm always going to recommend you do this. And I'm going to limit first the size of the images. I want them to be large. <clears throat> Google Image Search used to be a lot better this way. You could pick exact pixel dimensions that it need to be bigger than. Now it just gives you large, medium, and icon size. Large simply means it's at least a thousand pixels in one dimension, which is not very huge, but is about the size we need for, for this basic project. Okay, then you see I still get photos. I still get lots of color. So I want to change the color to black and white in the tool options and sure enough there's the one i found and then some others that i would have had to go through probably many pages in order to find and next i'm going to change the type from any type of art to line drawing and that will give me much more specific examples including a signature by kurt vonnegut which might be fun to use he did a little self-portrait every time he signed his name. So I really like the looks of this one. So if I like them, what do I do? I right click on them. And I'm going to say open link in new tab, not open image in new tab, because what we're seeing are just thumbnail images. We want to open the link. We can also just click on it and you'll see it off to the side, but then you have to open this image in a new tab and it will tell you the pixel dimensions. Once I've done that, I can say open image in new tab just to make sure that it's not corrupted and that I have an image that's full. And then I can either download this or screen grab it because it's at its full size. To download it, you would right click and say save image as and then save it to your downloads. But this is the, the full size, so I'm just going to go ahead and do a screen grab of it. So I can show you both screen grabs and downloads. We're going to put them all into a folder. You can't really tell on the projector, but on my computer and on the video, you'll see this has a gray border around it, right? The reason we always want to view the image in the browser at full size is so we can see if there's any watermarks, if there's any like borders, if there's any weirdness to it. If it's not a good image, you always have to view it at full size. Here's the other one I'm interested in. I'm going to open the image in a new tab. So I get the full size. This is fully zoomed in. And because I don't want to risk screen grabbing a little bit of the black at the edges, I'm just going to right click and say save image as. And then it will go to downloads. So I've got the string I've got a picture of Kurt Vonnegut's signature. I've got hands. I've got an atomic bomb blast. And I've got a cat. I think that's enough. If I wanted to do more, I certainly can. But this is good for the demo. I try to, try to keep it pretty simple. Now, what's nice about doing image searches is it will show you things you weren't looking for. And that might give you some ideas too. It might show you how other people have solved these problems in the past. Especially if you're dealing with something that's a difficult subject matter. So Google Image Search is often a, a good inspiration tool.